here with us today. It's it's late <laughs> in China, so um, it's great to have him here. He is a professor of Institute of Computing Technology in Chinese Academy of Science, and the deputy director of IECT, and also a co-founder of Beijing Institute of Open Source Chip. And his talk is really, really interesting and aligned with all or some of the research activities that we are doing here at BSC, which is um, this open source project for uh, designing and developing an HPC processor. So Professor Wow, again, thank you very much for being here with us today and the floor is yours. Okay, so can you see my slides? Yes, we can see them. Okay. Uh, thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for coming uh, to this talk, and also thank for in for inviting me. Uh, my name is Wingang Bao from uh, Chinese Academy of Sciences. I'm also serving as the chief scientist of uh, Beijing Institute of Open Source Chip, which is BOSC. So uh, today I'm going to introduce our recent work on open source projects uh, in which was uh, which was which is in the undertaking in BOSC. Uh, well this is the outline of my talk. I will, there are four parts is why we want to build an open source chip ecosystem and uh, what we are doing now this is the Xiangshan project and how we build the Xiangshan project. Actually, we use an agile chip development methodology and who are building the open source project. So I will introduce the one student, one chip initiative. So first of all, we are working on the open source chip ecosystem. So because uh, we, we know there is a new wave of uh, revolution in chip design, just as like a risk five uh, bring us the new wave. But the wave, let's, if we uh, review the wave, we can see that the last wave, last wave was in the 1970s and the 1980s. During that time, there was war between two kinds of uh, instruction set architecture, which was, which were the CISC and the risk. And there was also revolution of chip design methodology from designing circuit manually to computer aided design and the electronic design automation, which is the EDA. And there was also a boom of new tech startups. Many startups were founded at that time and today, those startups already become giants, just like uh, like like ARM, like several EDA companies. So, what, 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 how about forty years later? And today, we are facing new challenges. But we can conclude to just one phenomena that is high costs of innovation in chip design. Here are two charts. For the left chart, this is the funding raising, funding raising phases of chip startups. So we can see that for seed uh, round, seed round usually chip startups need to raise about like half a million US dollar. And then they need to raise almost uh, 20 million US dollars to figure out working prototype. In comparison, for internet account startups, they only need to raise about like 3 million in round in series A, in round A for a uh, working prototype. So chip startups 
encountering are facing high costs of innovation. How to how to tackle this problem? Uh, we are inspired by the open source software ecosystem. Actually, open source software ecosystem lowers the cost of innovation in the software, especially in the smartphone area. Today, we can we we can we can we can see many small groups. They can build an app, a mobile app prototype in just like three to five months. Because of those uh, easy access to the open source, uh, to, to those open source software, and uh, there, are, there are a lot of uh, mobile app appearing. Some, statistic, some statistics show that there were more than almost like 9 million, 9 million mobile apps by 2020. This is because of uh, the open source software ecosystem. So we are uh, inspired by the open source software ecosystem and we envision in the future, there should be an open source chip ecosystem that can lower the barrier of chip development by saving time to market and the cost of IPs, ED tools and engineers. In particular, the open source chip ecosystem should consist of open source ISAs, IPs, and SOCs, templates. And it also should comprise of open source languages and EDA tools. And it also it needed to provide the agile and fast verification and simulation technology. Finally, the open source chip ecosystem should also involve uh, like open source so open source software such as like operating system and compiler. All those elements should be integrated into some platforms, and the platforms can provide more than like 90% of lines of code that are reusable. In this case, in, in such way, and uh, a, a chip development group, a chip development team can do customization very fast by only build, only write some customized lines of codes, less than 10%. So this is uh, our envision. We think, we, we, we envision that in the future, there should be a uh, open source chip ecosystem like this. Particularly, the open source chip ecosystem can be divided into three levels. The, the, let's look at the design flow of a chip. Usually we have a, a spec that describe instruction set architecture, and then we do micro architecture exploration to get some documents design, and then we do engineering to get the, the RTL codes. And finally, we use EDA tools to get a layouts of a chip design. So the three levels of open source chip ecosystem are first level, open source ISAs. If the ISA is open or closed, and then the second level is if the design and implementation are open. And finally, if the tools and the infrastructure are open. So there are three levels of the open source chip ecosystem. Then we can put risk five into the first category, the first level. Actually, risk five belongs to open ISAs. And we actually, our work focusing on level two and level three. That is why we found BOSC in, 1990, in 2021. So BOSC was founded by 16 companies and the BOSC focused on 
level two and level three of open source chip ecosystem. And its mission is to advance the OSCE by bridging the gap between academia and the industry. So now uh, there are some open source projects in BOSA, including open source RISC-V core, which is the Xiangshan project, and the open source network on chip, as well as open verification platform. So today I'm going to introduce uh, mainly two projects. One is the open source RISC-V core, that is Xiangshan, and another is the open verification platform. So next, I will introduce the Xiangshan project, the project. The goal of the Xiangshan project is building an open source high performance RISC-V core, which is widely adopted by both the industry and the research community, just like the Linux of uh, uh, the CPU. The Linux, yeah, that is our Lua model. And uh, so Xiangshan is an open source high performance risk five core. So currently it is the, the highest performance uh, open source series by far. We open all RTL codes with comprehensive documents. And we also open source development tools and platforms. So the Xiangshan project uh, is addressing two major challenges in the open source chip ecosystem. One is provide a high performance solution. So we're expanding computing demand. Uh, and the, uh, other, um, the other contribution is to provide high customization, customability. So we can provide uh, customize, customized, customized designs. And also, the Xiangshan codes are open sourced on the GitHub, already gains more than like 4,000 stars and uh, more than 600 folks. Uh, there is a joint team developing Xiangshan. The first version of Xiangshan was uh, launched in 2019 uh, by the Chinese Academy of Sciences. And uh, the release of the first version was uh, two years later in 2021. And then since the second version of Xiangshan, uh, BOSC is responsible for organizing uh, a group of companies to form a joint team to build the Xiangshan project. And the performance here we can see that the first version, the performance of the Xiangshan first version V1 is comparable to the ARM Cortex A76 III. And the second version, uh, the performance is comparable to the ARM Cortex A76. And now the Xiangshan, the third Xiangshan version is compared to the ARM Nervous N2. Of course, the power and air optimization are still in progress. Uh, this is the GitHub uh, data of Xiangshan. So now Xiangshan is one of the most active open source chip projects on GitHub. The stars, the number of stars are more than 4,000 and the, the, fo the forks are more than 600. Xiangshan has two tiles CPU core load map. One is called the Kunming Hu architecture, another is called the Nanhu architecture. So the Kunming Hu architecture are uh, designed for high performance. It targets the server data center segment and uh, it supports the RV23 profile and uh, some uh, leading risk file features such as the X extension and a V, v extension. So the performance is a, is a compatible, compatible with the ARM uh, Nervous N2. 
And then the Nanhu architecture is designed for the power area efficiency. It targets the industry control, at like uh, some um, automobile, some some those segments. It supports the RV20 profile and already tapered out and tested. The performance is competitive, com competitive with the ARM Cortex-A76. So this is uh, the, the, the roadmap of the Xiangshan, the two cores, the Kuminghu, uh, and uh, the Kuminghu will be taped out. We are in pro work, work in progress with the Kuminghu V2, and uh, uh, this, the target is uh, three gigahertz at a seven nanometer technology. And then the Nanhu, we are working on the Nanhu V5, and uh, it is uh, it already tapered out at 14 nanometer at uh, two gigahertz. So uh, Xiangshan is industry grade microarchitecture design, and it's also highly con configurable with agile development methodology. So Xiangshan was written in Chiso, and uh, but it can be delivered in both Chiso and Verog. So this is uh, uh, Xiangshan, what Xiangshan can provide. We also provide a configurable, configurable and scalable SOC solution. Here, the solution support supports the RISC V advanced in, in, interrupt architecture, and also the IOMMU architecture the debug and trace architecture. Actually, we have collaboration with like Simons. Siemens. Uh, they have a debug, they, they got debug and trace module integrated into the, the, the SOC. And we also provided a TE optimized, uh, optimized for the risk file and some like uh, uh, the shared L3 cache and support like CHI uh, XI4 and uh, also Tiling protocol. Yeah. And uh, also the third part NOC is also ready for the current uh, Xiangshan version. So it is it can be integrated with into the third part NOC that on chip. This is the microarchitecture of Kuminghu. And uh, uh some feature it's it is with decoupled front end, uh, we have uh, adopted aggressive outstanding instruction window. And it is, we provide the Xiangshan, the Kuminghu architecture provide low latency and high, mem high bandwidth cache access. Also uh, support like uh, a vector extension and a hypervisor extension. Just to quickly go through the microarchitecture of Kuminghu, uh, part by part. This part is uh, for the front end. So there are multiple level branch predictor and also uh, uh, instruction cache and, and a TLB uh, with a, a reasonable, uh, reasonable size of cache and TLB. Uh, for the back end, so it is six wide issue out of order design and the, the register the name we have twenty we have two hundred twenty four entry like uh, uh, integer register and the one hundred ninety two entry uh, flow point register and so forth. The ROB entry is one hundred sixty. The rename buffer is uh, two hundred and 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 fifty six. For execution unit, and we have a, a integrate block. It's, it has a four LU, four BIU, and one SRC, SRT, radix divider. So this is for integer. And for flow point block, we, there are four uh, unit, four FPU, and four divider, uh, two divider. Vector block, there are four vector VPU, and one uh, vector divider. So currently the vector length is 128. 
for Lotus Store, the memory block and the, uh, the Lotus Store pipeline, there are three loads pipeline and two store pipelines. And it supports 72 in-flight load and 64 uh, in-flight stores. The MMU already supported uh, 48 virtual address. And for data cache, for level one is 64. And we also provide some like uh, prefecture, compos composite prefectures, including like streaming prefetching, like strata prefetching, SMS and a BOP prefetching and so forth. Uh, for cache, for the private cache, so there are private level two cache. Uh, it is configurable. Configurable to from like 250, 56 to 512 kilobytes up to one megabytes per core. And the level three cache are shared. It is 16 ways up to 16 uh, megabytes. That is, uh, we, all, we support inclusive or non-inclusive to level two cache. And uh, uh, it's like 150 outstanding uh, issues. So the access latency is about like 30 cycles. Yeah, this is uh, the cache. So uh, for pipeline, there, there are 16, 13 stage of pipeline and with uh, uh, 16 cycles bronze, uh, mis bronze misprediction penalty. This is uh, the pipeline overview. And some uh, highlights, and uh, there are three stage for branch predictor, branch prediction, and a four stage for instruction fetch, and then uh, for decode and name, there are uh, this can be overlapped, and a three stage for issues for issuing, and uh, this is out of order execution. There are three cycle, uh, IP or add and multiply and five cycle AP fused the multi multiple add for divider yeah it's we have implemented SRT 16 FP divider and S uh, SQRT so this is uh, the just the micro architecture of uh, uh of Xiangshan. so for for the comparison with uh, Kunminghu and Nanhu uh we, we we can see the so here is uh, uh, the first, the second column is Kuminghu, and this column is Nanhu. So Kuminghu is competing comparable with uh, the nervous N two. Yeah, some some parameters are comparable, and Nanhu is uh, uh, can 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 be compared with uh, with Cortex A seventy six. Yeah, most of the features are comparable to this arms two. IPs respect, respectively. So how about the performance? Yeah, we do uh, different uh, ways, different method, methods of uh, evaluation, performance evaluation. Uh, one methodology is RTL simulation using two points. Yeah, this is some data. And we also use the FPG uh, Evaluation and uh, and uh, some like emulation, large emulation. So the evaluation results are following: for the Nanhu at two gigahertz, the spec CPU uh, inked two thousand six. The points is about like sixteen, uh, almost like seventeen, and for spec uh, float point two thousand six is almost like twenty. But the Kunminghu at three gigahertz. The performance is much higher, and uh, uh, the with uh, compiler optimization, this the int benchmark can reach can achieve almost fifty at a, at a three gigahertz. And this is uh, the result. And the uh, tape out, the Nanhu has already been tape out. Uh, the project was launched in 2021, and the first chip was back in 2023. And now uh, this is uh, uh, from the right side is the uh, the Nanhu chip. 
actually uh, it, it someone already used the chip to build a laptop, a, a tablet. And they also put uh, Fedora, Fedora on Shangshan Nanhu. So that the chip works quite quite good, and it is able to run at two point five gigahertz. And uh, yeah, this and the performance, the spec CPU two thousand six, is about ten points per gigahertz. And now we already have uh, two uh, uh the the tape out for the Nanhu V three and the Kuming Hu V one. So there are more tape parts in this year and uh, the next year. Uh, the Xiangshan was uh, supported by many companies and also used by many uni universities. There, there, are, there are already some companies use the Xiangshan for their chips. For example, a test chip, a test SOC using seven nanometer tape seven nanometer technology has been tapered out. And another company, they use uh, uh, the Xiangshan integrated with an, an AI acceleration chip at a five nanometer, it's delivered. There are also some other uh, usage. Uh, there's a startup, the Xingchen Technology. They actually uh, integrated Xiangshan the Nanhu architecture into their SOC just in two weeks. Here is their SOC prototype on the FPGA. Uh, it can run the Debian uh, Linux distribution and it can run some uh, 3D uh, gaming, 3D games. Xiangshan is also used by some universities such as uh, EPFL and Duke University for research. And uh, those research already be published on like an ISCA, like a micro, uh, those top conferences. Okay, that is about the Xiangshan. Uh, and next I will introduce uh, how we build Xiangshan. Actually, we use uh, an agile chip development methodology. First, uh, we use uh, the object-oriented, uh, the, the idea of object-oriented architecture. Traditionally, uh, we build a chip and we use circuit oriented, which means engineers usually describe designs at a gate level. But we actually leverage the Chiso language and we build the whole Xiangshan chip as objects and describe the whole design at an object level. So this is the total different from previous uh, designs, pre traditional chip design flow. For example, we have constructed an, an object-oriented architecture-based hardware component library. The whole Xiangshan are implemented as classes, leveraging the, the object-oriented programming concepts such as like encapsulation, like inheritance, in inheritance and polymorphism. So there are more than 1,000 classes of which five, about like 550 data interface classes, more than five, uh, uh, four, four, sorry, four and 450 data interface classes and for more than 400 hardware module classes, 12 configuration classes, and 200, more than 200 parameter classes. So those classes are very flexible and uh, provide the highly configure, configurability. We actually use Chiso to implement uh, the Xiangshan. Why we use Chiso? Actually, we did the quantitative experiments in, in 2018, already six years ago, we did this quantitative 
experiments result. Uh, at that time, we actually uh, we we assign a same task, the same task to an engineer and a, an undergraduate student. The task is implement an L2 cache and integrate into a CPU core. And the engineer used the, the Verilog and used the traditional chip design flow. But for the undergraduate student, it, he used the, the Chiso language. So here we can see that the engineer actually, he uh, spent six weeks uh, writing more than 1,000 700 lines of codes to complete the L2 cache design implementation. But uh, the result is there, 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 there were still bugs so that uh, the CPU core cannot start Linux. In comparison, the undergrad student only spent, only took three days writing 350 lines of codes to implement the L2 cache. And the cache was integrated into the RIS-5 core. And then the, the CPU core can start a multi-core Linux, even supporting the Ethernet in DMA mode. So for this comparison, we can see that uh, so for at least for this task, the chisel based uh, development below can achieve 14 times faster and also only uh, with uh, like one fifth lines of codes. The second, then we, we further compare the design quality. So then we found that uh, if we compare the power, the, the frequency and area on an FPGA board and the chisel based design, is, is even better than Verilog design. So the conclusion is that the agile development approach based on Chiso can achieve the same level of quality as traditional development methodology methods. So that gave us uh, the confidence of uh, choosing Chiso to build uh, the Xiangshan. This work was done in uh, 20. 18, and we published a paper in 2019. And uh, then when we started the Xiangshan, and for the first phase of Xiangshan development in 2020, we only took three months to implement the Xiangshan version one, which is an out of order call with six issue. That was able to boot Linux. Here is the timeline of the development. And in 2022, there were only uh, less than 100k hello lines of codes, including about like 66 hello lines of codes for design and 20 uh, and 30 hello lines of codes uh, for verification. So this is uh, uh, the design for uh, using like a object oriented architecture by choosing Chiso. But there are some missing in uh, uh, Agile hardware design. Just to uh, quote the comments of uh, Professor Babak Fasafi from EPFL. So here is uh, uh, a, a, a short paper from, uh, the, he, he wrote a short paper. So the title is, what is missing in, in Agile hardware design? Verification. Yes, since uh, we choose uh, Ch Chiso as our language to build a Xiangshan. But uh, the Chiso, the introduction of Chiso broke the loop, the loop of uh, design and a verification flow. Traditionally, traditionally, uh, existing verification platform and the EDA tools are based on Chiso, uh, sorry, based on Verilog or VHDL. And uh, since we introduced the Chiso, there's no tools can support Chiso 
for fabrication. Then we have to build a, a bunch of new tools to form an agile verification platform. The platform includes two parts. One is for functional verification. Another is for performance verification and including some uh, open source tools such as a violator like DRAM sim and SimPoint and so forth and Gem5, yeah, and so forth. So in together to form an agile verification platform, this platform we call the Mingjie. Uh, this is an agile design and a verification platform. Here is we consider the whole development of Xiangsai as an iceberg. Since the, the microarchitecture design is the, what, the, the part up above the water. And the, the whole infrastructure, the platform, the Mingjie platform is uh, the part underwater. So this is, uh, we, we, we consider this is probably is more important than microarchitecture design of the Xiangsai. So the whole platform consists of 20, more than 20 new open source tools. Yeah, we also, this work was published on Micro 2022 and was selected to uh, the IEEE Micro Topics in 20, for 2022. Here are some highlights of the Mingjie platform. For example, we provide a diff test with uh, the design lure based verification, or agile verification. So, uh, for example, here is uh, the goal is uh, to identify the RTL functional errors in a timely way. It is very easy, or very, we can, it, it is easy to come up with the idea we co simulate the RTL level design on a test, DUT, against the instruction level reference model. But uh, the challenge is uh, for instruction level reference model there are many non-deterministic behavior. But the RTL simulation, the RTL simulation is deterministic. So we needed to deal with the non-deterministic -determ and the, with, the, with, the, with the determinism behavior at the RTL level. So how to deal with, actually we use a rules to describe some non-deterministic behaviors such as like uh, uh, here on the on this table, we have identified uh, those behavior, this, those non-deterministic uh, behaviors. Here is an example. For example, this is for the uh, a, a store, a load store instruction. Sometimes uh, there are two ways one is uh, uh, when you write a write a, uh, when you execute a store instruction, uh, there may be a TLB, a page fault. So needed to you needed to uh, finish the page fault to deal with the page fault first, and then finally to re execute the store instruction again. So both paths are legal at instruction level reference model. But for the RTL simulation, you need to write very details, like even for like buffer size and so forth. So it is uh, you, you usually usually requires many details. So our, our approach is uh, we provide some probes on the RTL codes and the probe can be inserted into the RTL design and to collect the data, collect the information. Those information will be sent to the instruction level reference model with the rules and the checkers. So we use rules to check those behavior if the behavior is legal or illegal. So in this way, we can compare um, uh, RTL design with uh, the instruction level reference model. Here is another uh, uh, 
another tools in the Mingjie platform. This is we call the Light SSS. The goal of Light SSS is to reproduce debug info information without significantly slowing down the simulation. So the idea here is also simple. Take periodic snapshots to allow the play in debug model in case of error. But the challenge is high cost, high cost, high time, and the storage overhead of snapshots. So Light SSS used the fork Cisco provided by operating system to take snapshot of the whole the whole simulation process. Actually, we leverage the copy on write mechanism provided by the operating system. System here is the is the uh, the, uh, the principle. Here is every every uh, for a time. For example, like every seconds, every ten seconds. So uh, we will call the fork Cisco to get a, to generate a, to generate a snapshot, and uh, uh, then the parent process will go will execute continue to will will continue to execute, and the the, the child process is. Uh, Stored as the snapshot. The so once there, once there is an error, and then we can choose a child process and change the execution model from high speed to slow speed model, slow simulation with a, a debug model, and in this way, we can get, get a, uh, we can figure out or to identify uh, where. The, the points of the bug. So the overhead is pretty small. For example, uh, the overhead is less than 0.1% for every one minute time, in time interval. Even for even we take snapshot for every second, every one second, uh, the overhead is almost only like 1%. And the next is uh, another uh, verification platform we call a Unity Chip. This is a crowdsourcing platform for chip verification. The idea is to involve software engineering into chip design for chip verification. So the Unity Chip platform support crowdsourcing and it is uh, uh, cloud-based. More importantly, it supports multiple languages, such as like Python, Java, Go, and, and so forth. So uh, everyone, every software engineering can use their, lang their preferred language, such as like Python to write verification, to write a test case, to test a, a, test a, a chip design. Here are some uh, evaluations, for example, uh, we have did a, done a experiments uh, which involve five undergraduate students. They spent two months using this uh, on the, they spent two months on the Unity chip platform and they learned how to use the platform and uh, to uh, write a test case. And finally, actually, they found the 10 bugs of the branch in the branch predictor unit of the Xiangshan. And if they, this is uh, uh, the data, the report uh, provided by the, by the platform. And the performance is, is also better than the Coco TV. So Unity chip uh, has, can, can perform better. It's also easy to use. We 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 found for for a student for a freshman uh, of a university, and uh, uh, one student he is not familiar with Linux and Python, so he spent five days uh, to learn how to use a tool, and then he spent another ten days 
to uh to to learn how to write a test case and after 15 days which is two weeks uh, after two weeks he can um he can join the arm of fabrication for Xiangshan project so these tools actually provide us um to pro to to guarantee the quality of Xiangshan oh, finally who uh who are involved in the Xiangshan project. Here I want to introduce an initiative called the One Student, One Chip. Here is the distribution of a contribution for Xiangshan. Today, Xiangshan already uh, has the, the source, the lines of code is more than 214K kilo, kilo lines of codes. And uh, uh, there are eight four contributors from 24 organizations, including universities, companies, research institutes. And uh, surprisingly, there are the students, master students, PhD students, even some undergrad students, they contributed almost uh, 20, 75 lines of codes. So where are they from? So where are they from? Actually, uh, we have uh, an initiative called One Student One Chip. Actually, we are training, we are we are educate students by ourselves. We follow the philosophy of learning by doing. We teach undergrad students to build real chips. So the initiative was uh, launched by the University of Chinese Academy of Science in 2019. Here is the logo of the One Student One Chip. Actually, there's four Chinese character. This is a uh, uh, one student, one chip. Yeah. For the first term of the OSOC in nineteen uh, in twenty nineteen, uh, five senior under UCAS undergraduates participated participated in the in the initiative, and they completed the design of a sixty four risk file processor in four months, and the chip was tapered out with 110 nanometer technology. And the chip was, when the chip was back and it can run Linux and also a self-built UCAS core by those students. So those students, they, they actually uh, mastered the skills of not only uh, CPU design, but also operating system design. They built their own operating system, the UCAS core. Uh, this is the uh, the timeline of uh, the four months development. Uh, each color represents a student's effort. Uh, this the, the the chip called Nutshell. It is also open sourced on the GitHub, and it is a Linux compatible compatible uh, RISC five core designed by designed by under, uh, undergraduates. Uh, here are some parameters of. Uh, of, of the CPU core and it was tapered out uh, uh, by the uh, 10, 110 nanometer technology. And the chip was back in 20, in the early 2020. And here is uh, uh, one of the student is, uh, um, one student is, uh, is, is doing his PhD, uh, not a PhD, sorry, is a bachelor uh, thesis defense on the June 2nd, 2020. Here, uh, their design also ex accepted to the risc 5 Global Forum in 2020. And that time, here is, uh, the forum is globally, and the one site is, uh, is in Barcelona. Today, uh, the OSOC initiative is uh, uh, is expanding and the global, uh, uh, the countries wide, even global wide. So now more than uh, eight thousand five hundred students participate in the OSOC initiative. So the, this line is the applicants, the number of applicants. So already more than uh, eight thousand five hundred. So covering almost uh, more than, almost uh, already more than 600 universities. 
universities yeah and uh, those students they they are it's it's quite a challenging actually building a real chip is very challenging so here is the students who are finished the de their design this is almost like 1000 almost 1000 and finally uh, we have a very uh, uh, strict uh, kind of very high barrier for taping out or uh, more than 100 students they already get their chips and uh, more students are in their progress and they 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 here almost like 400 students are working on uh, their chip still working on their chip here is uh, the layout of a student's design so we have uh, introduced uh, uh, a solution to reduce the cost of taping out. Uh, for, for example, here is one die. In a die, there are multiple designs by the student. Usually for 110 nanometers technology. So we integrate the 10 students design into a die so that the cost, the tape out cost can be reduced by one tenth, reduced to one tenth. And this chip is uh, taped out by open source EDA tool. And we also have an EDA tool, open source EDA tool project. And here is the chip was taped out by the, the, the open source EDA tool. Here is uh, uh, the chip was back and integrated into the PCB board. Here the, the board actually, uh, okay, the students, they are testing the chips and the booting uh, Linux and run uh, uh, some applications. Uh, the, the board will deliver the two students. And uh, I'd, I'd like to share that uh, even the board, the sky board is designed by those students. Actually, so they, some students can not only build their chips, but also they, they are, they are, they are, they are skill. They are also have skills of uh, building a PCB board. Okay, the students get their 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 chips uh, and their boards, and then they uh, brought up chips and make some record and share their record online. Yeah, so those students actually then we will uh, select those students to join the Xiangshan project. So that, that is why the Xiangshan project has uh, 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 has already uh, attracted so many talented uh, talented young students. They are also uh, become contributor to the RISC-V uh, the community, uh, the global RISC-V community. For example, they uh, translated uh, the course information the course into Chinese. So those students are all from the One Student, One Chip initiative from the whole country, from different universities. OSOC uh, initiative is, uh, is, is, is become global. And then in this year, in earlier this year, uh, Professor uh, Kabi Kass from Kazakhstan also adopted the OSOC initiative to train the first group of chip talents uh, in their in, in his country in his country okay uh, finally uh, I, I'd like to share some uh, resources this is uh, the tutorial resources of Xiangshan all are open sourced and here is uh, uh, the the website of the one student one chip initiative yeah you can we also we already have the english version so you can access the one student one chip initiative online finally uh, i'd like to make a summary so risk file actually bring us a lot of opportunity and it is best time for us to build a globally shared open source chip ecosystem so uh, let's uh, contribute together to the open source chip ecosystem yeah, that's my talk. Okay, thank you very much.
Wow, it's thank you very much. <laughs> wow, it's it's really impressive how many things you have done. Because, and also the all the, the process that you, you have built on the way, right? So it's educating, designing, developing, and continue educating new talented people for, for the future. So it's it's great. And now also exporting that uh methodology and, and tools to, to the rest of the world. So thank you. That's that's super great. Um now I think it's um 